What are we working on right now? What are we working on? We're working on our cabin today. Hey everyone, welcome to episode three. Um, in this episode, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about the technical aspects of actually building a cabin. In this particular episode, we're focusing a bit more on the foundation and setting up the foundation for the build. Um, it's a little bit different than last time, but I hope you learn something and enjoy the ride along the way. So what are those wooden things? They're benchmarks. What you use to square up your building. Run string lines, put your corners in. Obviously, you can't just nail, like normally, you'd nail down stakes into the ground. We have to frame it out differently, but the top section is the same as the normal thing else. The top piece is going across horizontal, roughly the deck height and the deck height. And everything's all said and done. Pretty high. Here where I'm standing, we are at the lowest point, it's almost a butt, it's almost six feet here. Are we gonna need a ladder to get in the house? Yeah, we're gonna start building. <laughs> did we get up to today? We're doing the forms. Okay, so what are forms? They're boxes that you fill with concrete. What are the X's in the middle? Uh, at the center of where the, the U-head's got to go for your 6 by 6s posts that your, your building's getting basically made from. So basically the foundation. Yeah, foundation. Foundation. <laughs> If you had soil ground, you dig down and pour, but in this case, we're anchoring bolts into it. Anchoring bolts. Okay. So, what is this uh, spider web above us? That's your uh, well. That's your benchmark lines. Basically, it's your entire cabin up in the air with string lines. That's where for right now, and that's what gives me the direction on where these bones post go through using a plumb bob. Do most people use this method? A plumb bob. This, yeah, yeah, they, well, they use, uh, they can use uh, actual surveyor equipment, but they don't have that kind of money. They're doing it like from the 1900s. <laughs> So after several days of measuring and remeasuring and holding tape measures and including building those boxes and making them fit to the bottom of the granite and all the different angles, we finally moved on to the next stage. But I shouldn't have been wishing for the next stage. I got to listen to this all day long while I worked away in the tent right next to the build site. Hi Clayton. Last time we saw you, you were drilling holes. What were those holes for? Well, looking here. Set the rebar into place now. So you put the rebar in the holes. Put the epoxy in the epoxy. bottom of it. Yeah, it holds it into the ground, the holes that I drilled. And now you're wrapping rebar around the ones that were epoxied in the holes. Yep. And eventually it will look like that. What are these rebar for? It's, it's strengthening the concrete up when I go to pour it. It's like the bones of the concrete. So there is something that did happen and we can get clips of. Um, just because our phones were safely stored away, uh, we did bring the concrete over on the barge. If you remember, we created the barge to bring the concrete over to begin with just because the smaller boat couldn't handle the weight of the concrete. So we did do a few trips of bringing the concrete bags back and forth. Um, the concrete bags totaled 360 and each of them were 60 pounds. So you can imagine how much of a job that was for us to get done, but it's done. And that is what Clayton is doing in the next clip. He's working with these concrete bags and using all 360 of them. If you're building a regular cabin or a cabin, I guess, on the mainland or land, 
um, you wouldn't have to do this step because you could just order a concrete truck to come in and pour your foundation for you. But obviously that wasn't an option if you're building a cabin on an island by yourself. <laughs> so this is the route we took. Here you can see Clayton mixing concrete bag by bag. He's then pouring it into a single bucket, carrying it over to each pile and pouring it in. Each pile takes quite a few buckets, so you can imagine how tiring this would be for him. We used a generator to power the concrete mixer, um, and we also had a small pump pumping water up from the lake to add the moisture to the concrete bags. So on our center point here, we put a nice little Chelsea's hand there. It fully pops into here. My handprint. And we finished the last pour. That we finished it on June 6th. So we often get some pretty funny questions um, from our friends and family about living on the island, living off grid. And in this case, we actually had a pretty funny answer. Chelsea's cooking right now, and uh, people always ask us how we do our laundry. Oh, here you go. It's a cement mixer. We got water getting pumped in right now. Looks pretty good. We're gonna let that fill up with some soap and then we'll uh, turn it on and I'll come back and I'll show you what's up. Brought to you by Purex. The cement mixer choice. We're gonna put some of this in here and just kind of move over here, move over here. There you go, right on top. Alright, we have the water go a little higher, and we're going to turn it on. Alright, let's uh, get this thing rocking. There we go. Just getting itself, you know, 10 minutes like that. So we're back on the spin cycle now. You can see how I everything's mean, getting washed up nice, getting all thrown around there. I mean, I don't think your washing machine's like that. Getting it all nice and clean and agitated. I thought that's going to be clean right now. Washing machines are us. Next is the dishes, eh? <laughs> now, we weren't always working. Sometimes when the water was really calm and flat, and it was a sunny day, we'd take some time off and go for a little trip around the island for a fish. We then finish up the day having pie irons over the fire and watching the sunset. This is Island Life.